All right, let's make some more dreams come true today. I'm gonna to teach you in this video how to do the accompaniment part and the bass line for the song, Autumn Leaves in G minor. And if you want, you can set this up as a loop for yourself. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, but also you could do it if you were accompanying somebody else um, in like a duo or in different situations. And it's just good to learn tunes in this way, to learn the bass lines, the inner voices, the melody, all kinds of things. So. Um, after I show you that, I'll probably show you a few more things, and then there's gonna be more videos down here in this playlist for other ways that you can play over Autumn Leaves. The reason I'm doing this is for one of the students in my boot camp, Nicole, and she's actually a professional teacher of many years, but she asked for this, and that's one of the benefits you can get whether you work with me through my Creative Strings Academy or in one of the boot camps. So check the links, but let's do this. Um, so we're gonna start with the inner voices. All I want you to do is just play the third and seventh of each tune. Uh, sorry, the third and seventh of each chord as quarter notes. This is just a great way to get started. So let's see if I can get that going, get my loop, and third and seventh. C minor, F7, B flat major seven, E flat, A minor, D minor, or D7, then to G minor. Same thing. I'm gonna put the, uh, the chord changes in the description below. But this is it. Hopefully I'm keeping my tempo uh, steady while talking. I'm adding a couple uh, passing chords, but really just focus, focus on your third and seventh with voice leading. Tempo, not too bad. And now we're gonna do our bass line. Uh, just root. Root fifth. F to the fifth. B flat to the fifth. E flat to the fifth. E flat fifth, D. Occasionally, an extra quarter note but basically we're doing half notes on the root fifth root fifth and that's your loop so you can rewind and try it again if you want or you can write out your third and seventh that's easy because it'll probably be hard for you to find it until you've done this a few times. Um, but let's see if we can do some more with this as well in this, vis in this video. Um, so one of the reasons that this tune is advantageous to learn is that it doesn't have a lot of modulation. And so that means it's not changing from key to key all the time. Whereas some tunes, some jazz tunes especially, are more difficult because they do change from key to key. So because this doesn't change from key to key that often, we can basically play um, a scale. We can play out of a scale or out of like one key signature. Now the thing is, it's not as easy as it sounds. It's not just that cut and dry. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play some lines, have you play them back to me, and these particular lines are all gonna be crafted out of the G minor pentatonic scale. Now, it would be a lie if I said, you can just use anything you want in the G minor pentatonic scale, <laughs> and, you know, and it's always gonna sound good over this tune. And that's sort of the simplified version of what people will tell you. But what I think is true is that you can always find something from the G minor pentatonic scale if you pick the right notes. And sometimes you have more choices, sometimes you have less choices. But anyway, let's just do a little you play back to me, um, and I'll try to make some lines out of that, just, just picking from that scale, but I'm not gonna indiscriminately pick from the scale all the time, okay? So let's see if we can get this happening. Uh, one, and I'll start on the note, let me start on the note um, G, okay? A one, two, three. G 
minor pentatonic. pentatonic. more chorus. So one of the things I like about that chorus that just happened is that those are pretty distinct phrases. They're really simple, they're really clear. Now obviously I could add more um, ornaments to it, I could add more inflections, um, and I would especially be able to have more variety of phrase lengths if I wasn't trying to make this these really short phrase uh, um, um, uh, call and response type video, right? But what I wanna do now is, is using a little bit more of the chord changes so you can hear the difference. This time, instead of just playing the G minor pentatonic scale, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna focus on playing the chord tones, which sometimes is gonna take us out of that scale, okay? Let's see if we can do, if we can do that. Uh, one, two, a one. <laughs> There's just a, a to show the difference between using just the G minor pentatonic scale um, discriminately, only some of the notes in the scale, depending on which notes will fit for each chord that we're on, versus trying to play different scales or arpeggiating some of the chords as they go by. Again, part of the reason that, that Autumn Leaves is an easier to tune is because you can get away with playing more or less in one key the entire tune. But it's not quite that simple when you try to get more, um, more explicit with the different harmonic colors. Or if you try to get more, um, how can I say, more detailed, more sophisticated with it. So I think what I'd like to do now is just to let give you some of this backing track and you can play along and just do your own thing with it. And I'm gonna put another video so we can do more with this tune as well. Um, just bear in mind that again, if you would like to get reviewed from me, get your own videos custom made for you, um, get my feedback on your playing, that you can connect with me via the Creative Strings Academy or our intensive boot camps, just like Nicole did, and that's why I made this for her. So check the links for that. Meanwhile, here's the backing track if you just wanna play along a little bit. All right. And until next time, happy practicing.